So, just tell us a little bit about what it is that you do, and, uh, and, and then we're going to take a look at actually developing a website tonight. Okay, so what I do, um, it's kind of a broad spectrum. Uh, so technically my title is graphic designer. Um, and what that entails is everything from billboard design, logo design, brochure design, business card design, um, website design, um, pretty much anything that you see a visual, I can create. So we use our excellent Photoshop Adobe CS programs and um, we should have had a disclaimer these. at the beginning of the show. What about Mac? She's going to be talking about Mac. Mac. Pro, Pro Mac. She's going to be talking about Photoshop. She believes in non-free. <laughs> she endorses it. She supports it. She Purchase. promotes it. And uses it. Next week you realize we're going to be redoing this whole thing in the GIMP. You really should. Hey. There you Just go. make sure I'm not around. Okay. <laughs> so, so with that, like, is there... How long have you been doing this? Like? Um, I've been doing the actual graphic design portion for, I guess, about three years now, yeah. professionally. Um, before that, I kind of tinkered a little bit. Um, so is, is but it, yeah, so about three years with it, the programs and everything. Is it largely like an experience-based profession where, you know, you get better and better and better as you... It, it really Well, it's one of those things where um, you can be born with a talent. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you do need like the, the skill set behind it, the schooling and the, the everything like that to get better. Yeah. How to use your Photoshop. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, it, it does help to have um, the talent, it does help, help to have the schooling, but to have both at the same time is kind of where you get your great designers, um, opposed to those people who can just create logos, great designers. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's really not that complicated. It's just fun. It's art, art for a living. Yeah, I guess so. that's the that's the fun <laughs> thing about that kind of work is that you're doing something that you basically probably grew up loving. Yeah, exactly. Like I think of my daughter who is drawing all the time, so I can see her using something she like this. She can be like me. There you go. Yes. <laughs> you, you can train her up. She's, she's got the uh, Wacom Intuos 4 tablet here, um, which yeah. you can't really see. I don't know if you can hold that up. Yeah. It's a beautiful tablet. It's uh, not clean. But it's great. I highly suggest it. So this is, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the tablet, it's like a digital pen. This one doesn't use batteries, does it? No, no. it actually plugs in by USB onto your computer. But the pen itself is actually powered by, by the tablet. hovering over the tablet. Yeah. Mm. So no having to change batteries or things like that. Accuracy-wise? No, it's wise? fantastic. Oh, it's great. It's got, I don't remember exactly what all the specs are, but... Um, pressure and everything and sensitivity like so if you're in pressure points yeah if you're in Photoshop and you're painting a picture you can um, you don't have to change your brushes you don't have to change your opacities it just all does it for you according to pressure so it's fantastic do you use the different nibs um, no you not so much to, but no. it does include yeah it does like come with it comes with like, like three or four different time or different kinds but mm -hmm. yeah I just tend to stick with the one cool. that's the Wacom in tools for I just wanted to kind of just express what it is that she's using here, but uh, we'll have a link to that product uh, in the show notes for episode number 181. So with this, you're basically controlling it like a mouse. Yeah. But then artistically, you're able to bring up Photoshop and just draw away. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm drawing on a sheet of paper, um, but the paper is on my computer screen. So learning curve-wise, because you're seeing what you're doing up here, but you're actually doing it down here, was that difficult? Um, it took about a week to kind of master it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But after that, it's it's hard to go back to a mouse after. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Could you actually demonstrate for us a little bit about uh, what, what you do with the tablet? or Demonstrate. Well, just maybe bring up Photoshop and we can see uh, a little bit about... Sure. See, she's working this thing just like it's a mouse. Working away. So you said this is a CS4? This is... Yes, this is a CS4. Um. Do you just want me to get into it? Or? Yeah, sure. This is a website that you're working this, on? Um, this what this was just a, yeah, just a sample of a website that I, I did. Um, and then just an example of a logo mm -hmm. with a, it's just a fake company on here. But So you can do things like that. The logo we actually do in a program called Illustrator, so it's all vector. Um, whereas in Photoshop, we do our websites and our images and stuff because it's raster. 
So if you were to actually, do you want to go ahead and start creating the website? Yeah, or? well, and I, I figure there's, there's more to just, to creating the website than just sitting down and going at it. Like there must be a, a planning process or a, a creative, like sit down and, and get some ideas. Or mm -hmm. do you just basically, you're not using templates, but you're using experience to say, okay, well, this is the kind of layout that we want. We want a menu. We want um, the content. We want big, bright images. Right. Where, well, where does it start for you? There are, you, for every website, there's your general, um, every website has a navigation. Every website has your content. Um, usually has a logo, usually has some kind of big picture on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of take those and then what happens is I sit down with a client and they tell me what kind of feeling they want from their site or what kind of a business they are, and what they want to portray, and then I take that and sometimes I'll have an idea right off the top of my head, sometimes it takes a little muddling around through some inspiration pieces I've grabbed. Right. Um, but then you take that and you take uh, their their vision for what they want and and um, the pieces of the site and you just kind of, I guess, so for lack really of a better word, mash it, it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is very much experience, creativity, and talent kind of all combined. Yeah. So it might be good to hire someone like you if we don't have so much talent. It would be. <laughs> right. Or just hire you. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Hint, hint. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I guess like if you don't like, I'm I'm a programmer and I do a lot of programming. But as far as my weak points go, I would say graphic design would be my weak point because I never grew up as the artist in the family, right? Mm -hmm. I would be lost with a pen and paper if I wanted to <laughs> do a drawing or something like that. So which is great for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and right, I'm well, sure I'm sure I do some things on sites that as a programmer would drive you crazy, like. Absolutely. As a, as a designer, I love big pictures, and I love to make um, mm. to make the website more complicated, as though it's an art piece. So I like difficult navigation items and stuff like so that. Do you, and do you find that you have to hold back sometimes for the site so that it can be programmed because you don't want it to be a, a thirty-minute download? Yeah, and some things um, where you want the the text and everything to be readable, um, yeah. so I can't do some really fancy text. Or font treatments because mm -hmm. then it ends up being a picture and then you can't right search engine read friendly it, so. fonts come into play so it does end up holding you back a little bit but right right usually you can work around it okay well if you could take us through a little bit about what it is that you've got going on here sure so this is just a, a sample of something um, I had done and if we want to go through just quickly kind of how we we brought it together so this one here um, it's made up of different layers and we take this and then Robbie would take this afterwards and then he would slice it all up. So I just have to kind of make the look so that he has something to go by. So if we were to start, we would probably start with a background. So I'm going to put a gradient on here. I want to go the other way. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of, um, playing around more than anything. I can mess around with a gradient for 10 minutes before I'm actually happy with it. Right. And we're going to do a little bar up on the top here. <clears throat> okay, so that's just our basic background there. And then we have to add in all our stuff that actually makes it a site. So, no particular order. I'm probably a little more scattered than the average website <laughs> designer. It's, it's called artistic. <laughs> yeah. Artistic. That's what my parents told me, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's our logo. So you basically know where you want to go with it, and then you're, you're able to basically, you're, you're putting this together pretty quickly as it is. Yeah, well, once you, sometimes I'll sit down and I'll have uh, three or four pages of sketches or or sometimes I just know exactly what I want to do and I just start creating it on the computer or sometimes I have to sit on the internet for hours and search through posters and book covers and everything before I get a, mm -hmm. an idea of what I should go for. Right, get that inspiration from other, exactly. other people's art. Which is essentially the, our art in its own is 
imitations. So. See, she does, she does this honestly, John. Like she's playing the piano. She's going on. <laughs> She's, so she's waving this camera, magic wand. <laughs> no, it's great, but... Okay. Mm. You like, maybe lose train of thought. Oh, I beg, I'm um, sorry. We're going to throw another background in here. So I'm going to try to be fancy and make this box have rounded corners. Let's name you. Uh, the good old rounded corners in Photoshop. <laughs> actually more difficult than you would think. Yeah, did I actually mention that it's a lot easier in the GIMP? That you can right click on your selection and go rounded rectangle? I think we're talking about Mac right now. Oh, sorry. Just, <laughs> just don't want to get you confused. Right click, <laughs> rounded rectangle. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to pretend that Oh, okay, you happen. blurred it. All right. Uh -huh. Now control L or whatever it is on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, change your levels. <laughs> you already know this. I don't. Okay, so we'll keep. Oops. I don't know what I just. All did. right, so so far in the past ten minutes, she's created <laughs> a square, and she's uh, she's been able to round that square, and now she's gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not oh, making fun of you. I'm so making fun of Photoshop. Oh yeah. That's not I'm nice. a firm believer in uh, yeah, in the GIMP as an alternative to to Photoshop for sure. Oh, I understand. Okay, sorry. You don't understand. I do understand. <laughs> so I'm going to put in our background here. And we're just going to put in a little cheesy wood background. Fantastic. It might take a second. <laughs> and I'm going to take that shape. Das Bomber in the chat room says, Mac, half the computer at twice the price. Hey, I beg to differ. As you think, yeah, I did pay twice the price for this. <laughs> I, I really did. <laughs> but, oh, it didn't round. Oh, I feel foolish. Okay. okay, well, it's going to be a, a sharp edge. Sure, corner. yeah, and we're racing through, of course, because we're limited to the time of the show itself. So. Okay, well, we're going to live with that. Sure. 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 Okay. So you're creating a mask there, are you? Um, or did you I actually, didn't. You didn't I actually use a lot of masks, but that was actually a question I have for you. I'm not sure if you can take masks and if they mess you up, because I like to use a lot if of masks mess in me Photoshop. Up. Well, when you take it from Photoshop <laughs> sure, yeah. and then slice it, I don't know if it translates. Oh. You're gonna have to watch next week because oh, she's gonna have this PSD. <laughs> yeah, um, no, uh, masks are great. Oh. No, I, and masks uh, help obviously for me as a programmer helps me to be able to reposition photos. But also, if you want to, for example, uh, if you send me something with a, a rounded header mm -hmm. and, it, and it doesn't have a mask, I'll usually do a control click on the layer, create a mask on that layer, so that I can add other images and then reapply that same mask. Oh, okay. Right? So masks are a good thing. Masks are an awesome thing, yeah. And that, of course, goes for the GIMP as well. The GIMP supports masks. The GIMP mm -hmm. is $1,000 cheaper than Photoshop because it's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how's it coming along? Um, all right. Yeah? All right, I think. Yeah, so while I was working away here, we just put in our navigation at the top. Um, this blue bar across the center here, and then this white down here where our content's going to be. Okay. And so when you're planning out the navigation, obviously you've sat down with a client, and or if this was your own website, perhaps you've, you've decided, okay, I need home, about me, or about my company, uh, contact us, obviously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Usually they, they already know exactly what it is that they want to say. They want to usually tell a little about, uh, about their company, they want to show what they can do, um, they want people to contact them easily or have an easy way to contact them right. and depending on the company maybe there's a few other um, different kind of navigation items but yeah generally that kind of stuff is all laid out for me. Ideally it's all laid out for me. <laughs> so 
We are going to put a little drop shadow here. So this is where, just so you know, this is where the GIMP and Photoshop, their paths stop colliding is when you're using layer effects. Mm -hmm. Because the GIMP doesn't support those Photoshop layer effects. So what she's done there is added the, the drop shadow to the layer in such a way that it's, it's just an effect on that layer rather than a rasterized um, filter that's been applied to the layer. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to undo. So it's, it's really a nice feature of Photoshop for sure. Pro Mac? Stop it. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> then something else that we can do here just to make our lives a little bit easier. And I cheat a lot. Um, I want to put some links down here, so I'm just going to steal my main navigation items and rename them. Okay. So could you group those and just re and just? Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. So you're using the. You're creating a sub. Like yeah, so um, this isn't a duplicate at the top. Something I guess as a designer that I kind of like to do is when we have a smaller client, I like um, to make their websites look a little bit bigger than they actually are. Mm. So if they only have three pages, um, sometimes it's nicer to look right. like they're a bigger company or have more they going might not on. They have a lot of text too. Right? So exactly. So even though the links aren't going to separate pages, um, we add additional links on there to say something a little bit different, maybe it tweaks someone's interest in a different way and then they end up on the same page that's in our main navigation up here anyways. Okay. I, I do that sometimes with images, like I'll, even on our website, something that's on the menu, I'll certainly have uh, another link to that same item somewhere else, but just a little bit differently. You can go to, for example, watch the show, and that's the same, and then you'll see a list of the, fo uh, the, the different episodes, uh, but then you could also just get them right off the front page. Right. Right. So same sort of idea. Okay. So that's all for our navigation. And then for this particular site, I decided to be really cool and put in some Polaroids. So basically, you just make a white background. We're going to place our image. and guesstimate, which I find works the best. And yeah, that's where one, something like this, it's not something that we could really sit down and say, here's how you do it, because it does take that, that talent and the guesstimation, as you say. But that comes from, no doubt, a lot of experience as well. And another awesome drop shadow. Oh, that's cool. And that quickly you're able to get that effect of actually having a Polaroid there. Yeah. Very nice. Because everyone back to the good old days. Yeah, what is it about us regressing like that? It's like, that's what looks cool, is <laughs> a Polaroid yeah. from the 80s. Well, no one actually prints out pictures anymore. They're all on your computer. Who yeah. actually prints them out? That's where we talk about backups. A lot. Right. Yeah. Very important. That's a good point. That's kind of a scary thing. I, I am so afraid of electromagnetic pulses. <laughs> next, year. next year? With the solar flares? Right. Yeah. John just saying, just wait till next year. <laughs> solar flare activity is going to be very dangerous to computer hardware. Okay. Right. 35 millimeter negative slides, Agamotto recommends. That's what we should go with. See, it's all over my That's head. Cool it's just all. <laughs> We're going back too far here, guys. <laughs> Put in a little slogan there. And this is also something else that I'm not really sure is easy for Robbie to do on his end, where I make things different sizes like this. Yeah. I imagine you can just put like a like a tag around it or something, and then sure. specialize well, the what tag. Are, you're doing what font? Josephine? 
Yeah, I actually stole it off of uh, the Google API. Oh, this is from Google API. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good because what you encounter with uh, with the internet when you're coding for the internet is uh, web safe fonts. And if the font is not available as a web safe, safe font, what that basically means is you can be you can trust that everybody in the world has this font installed in their computer. So if you use you know a sans serif, well it's gonna it's gonna work or Helvetica is probably on every system uh, as a safe font. But there are um, certain font families that you can use as a programmer, uh, which we'll get into further in the series so that you understand um, what fonts you can and can't use. Because if you use a fancy font, you think, oh, this looks beautiful, it's a nice script, uh, and then you create the website, unless you create that as an image, which is a bad idea for search engine optimization uh, and for load times, screen readers can't read those as well, um, then it's not going to look the same on other com people's computers unless they have that font installed, so it's never a good idea. The Google API allows us to uh, link into a repository of fonts that normally would not be considered web safe and using CSS, it allows us to include fonts like this one um, that are indeed web, like now web safe based on the inclusion of Google's API. Plus that gives us the access to Google's cloud, which basically because they've got so many servers all over the, <laughs> all over the world, you're getting those fonts from their server rather than the user getting the font from your server. So it's super, super fast and it takes bandwidth uh, it puts the bandwidth um, on Google rather than on you, and they've got lots of it. So, so yeah, as far as sizing there goes, I would create each line as a span. Looks like uh, We Make and Awesome are probably the same size. <laughs> I think they're approximately. Approximately the same yeah. size, so they'd probably be the same. Um, so I call that a span yeah. ID or a span class of, you know, size one or whatever or something, and then the other one might be a different span, but the same font or a different right. ID within that span. Right. So, and we'll, we'll cover all this so you'll understand what I'm talking about in future episodes. But So yes, I can work with that, no problem. Great. Because we want to add that to the site. Basically, we'd have that background image, but that text would be actually text. Because you want the search engines to be able to index it. You want people to be able to copy and paste, people to be able to print, uh, things like that. Yeah. Cool. So uh, yeah, this is basically our site. How can you be done so quick? It doesn't have a, like this one has a little more finesse to it, like you can see. Sure, sure. So Didn't it does take after you, on, yeah. yeah, so after you, you kind of get everything together, I usually go through and take a couple hours to kind of tweaking and nudging an image right or left and a little bit crazy like that, so. Right. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's what I do. Very cool. If you have any questions for Krista, she's joining us in the chat room right now, category5.tv. It's the Category 5 chat room on Freenode. And of course, you can email us live at category5.tv. We'd love to hear from you.